Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a differential equation. We have y prime equals the square root of y over x. y prime is the first derivative. So we have to find a function of x, y of x, such that its first derivative is equal to the square root of y divided by x. At this point, you kind of try to guess what y is going to look like. For example, since y over x is square rooted and that gives us the derivative, could y be something like ax plus b? Or even y equals ax? Because if that's the case, ax divided by x is just going to be a, and I will get square root of a. But if you differentiate this, you do not get the square root of a, you just get a, right? Well, uh, they're kind of close. How about this one? This one is probably not going to work because if you divide by x, you're going to get a complex somewhat complex or complicated expression. Anyways, guess, you can go ahead and guess, but it might be a little hard. I don't know. Uh, I didn't find anything from here. So let's go ahead and do the following. First of all, let me tell you, I'll be presenting two methods. And I was kind of thinking about this problem. I, oh yeah, this is a really good candidate for this type of method. And then I thought about it and duh, there's an obvious solution. So let's start with the obvious one. Or should we start with the no, no, not that obvious one? Anyways, let's just start with the first method, okay? So the first method is going to be, we're going to turn this into a separable equation. So we're going to write this as the square root of y divided by the square root of x. Make sense? And then replace y prime, since y is a function of x. Notation-wise, we can write it as dy over dx. And that should equal square root of y over square root of x. By the way, Remember, we did a similar problem, which I was actually going for the harder method. And then somebody said, oh, yes, you can definitely use this method, which is a lot easier. And I never thought about it. Never occurred to me. Anyways, I am good at complicating things, by the way. You probably know by now. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to bring the root y over here and put the dx on the right hand side. So it's going to look like this. dy over square root of y equals dx over square root of x. Awesome. You know what the next step is after separating the variables? Integration. So let's go ahead and integrate both sides. And does this mean y equals x? Because they kind of look like each other, right? No, not really. You have to be very careful because looks can be deceiving. And integrals can be super deceiving, okay? Because if you have a function, if you like, let's say, x squared differentiated to x, right? If you have x plus square root of x plus the cube root of x, okay, Differentiate it, you get the answer real quick because there are rules. But when it comes to integrating like this or something else, it's not always possible and it's quite complicated. So it's kind of like reverse engineering. Anyways, that's a different story. Let's get back to this. So I'm thinking uh, first on the right hand side, the derivative of which function is 1 over square root of x. That's what integration means. Like we're looking for an anti derivative, but obviously there are infinitely many up to a constant, right? So, I can't really think of anything, but one thing I know is the derivative of square root of x is 1 over 2 times the square root of x. You probably know that, right? I mean, you should definitely memorize it if you're doing calculus. And if you're hearing any background noise, I'm sorry about that. That comes from the neighbors. But anyways, also to adjust the two thing, I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 half. In other words, I'm gonna, just going to stick a 2 at the bottom. Okay? And when I find the antiderivative of integrate, this is going to give me the square root of y on the left and the square root of x on the right. But from here, you could deduce that y equals x, right? The problem is we have to use the constant. Ah, oh, that infamous constant of integration that comes in. And be careful because you might lose points. You might lose the whole problem if you don't add that. Some teachers are very picky about it. I wasn't. Anyways, so now what do we, where do we go from here? Well, if you really wanted to get the y by itself, you can go ahead and square both sides, right? And then obviously, needless to say, right, x and y need to be positive, so on and so forth. Uh, well, if x and y are both negative, this equation still holds, right, doesn't it? Because y over x is going to be positive. But what happens to our solution here? That's going to be a good question. Anyways, this gives us y equals, if you square this, you're going to get x and then plus 2c, or not 2c, times the square root of x plus c squared. Now, c squared is another constant. You can call that k, but you have to be careful because these two constant, constants are related. 
So it's better to leave it like this. So we were able to find y in terms of x, which is nice. You can't always do this. But one thing about the constant c is if they give us initial conditions like if they say, okay, y at 0 is equal to 1 or something else like that, you can go ahead and plug it in and find the c values. In this case, I kind of like to keep it a little bit ambiguous. I know some people don't like it like differential equations, you have to give initial conditions. No, we can just solve differential equations for the sake of solving differential equations. They don't have to be applicable. And to be honest with you guys, I don't like applied math anyways. That's just a pet peeve. Um, I like abstract math and algebra, of course. Anyway, so that is our solution, right? Let's go ahead and take a look at the alternative because I think the alternative is cool and I'd like you to let me know and let everyone know in the comment section down below which method you like better and why. Don't just say I like the first method, you have to justify it. Okay, you don't have to but it will be better, I'll appreciate it. Anyways, so since we have y prime is equal to the square root of y over x and remember we tested y equals, was it kx or something x, right, bx, whatever. It didn't work, right? Y equals BX, and you can probably tell from here that definitely it's not gonna work, right? But, oh, one, one thing that I forgot to say, if C is zero, then you could definitely deduce that Y equals X, okay? In that case, Y equals X would be a special solution, which you can tell from here, C equals zero gives you Y equals X. Okay, anyways, that's a special solution. Now, since Y over X is square rooted, uh, I'd like to call it something. How about calling that thing U, all right? So from here we get y equals ux, which I need to differentiate. So I'm changing variables here, which is really powerful by the way. If you can, definitely do it. And uh, I'm gonna differentiate it since y is a function of x, u is also a function of x. And y prime from here is gonna be the, from the product rule, the derivative, of first, the derivative of the first function times the second, plus the derivative of x times the second, I mean the first function, whatever. So y prime is going to be x u prime plus u. And now I'm going to plug it into my equation here. Replace y prime with that, x u prime plus u. And then uh, the square root of y over x, since y over x is u, this is going to be the square root of u. Make sense? Awesome. Great. Now we're going to put the u on the right hand side and write this as square root of u minus u. And then we're going to write the u prime. Now we want to turn this into a separable equation one more time, okay? So let's go ahead and write the u as du over dx. And then we're going to go ahead and put the u's together. So we can kind of write it as du over square root of u minus u equals dx over x. Again, that comes down to integrating both sides. Let's do it. But this time, this is a little bit more complicated. But don't worry. It should be good. Let's go ahead and replace square root of uh, u with something. We're gonna use u substitution, but since we have u, we can't use u. We have to use something else. How about a t substitution? Let's call this t. Then this becomes t squared. So u is t squared. du is gonna be 2t dt. Okay, I'm not gonna say 2t or not 2t. Well, I just said it. 2t dt divided by t minus t squared, and then I'm going to integrate it, and that's going to be dx over x. Now, uh, we can factor out a t, and now this was going to be 1 minus t, and then I can cancel out the t's as long as t is not equal to 0, so it's going to be 2 times dt over 1 minus t, and that's going to be, can I just, okay, fine, I'm going to integrate next time, and if you integrate this, this is going to be 2 times, now we, we got to be careful, 1 minus t, think about it, if you had a, a 1 over t, it will be ln. This would also be ln, but from chain rule we get a negative sign. So I think it should be negative 2 times ln 1 minus t. Let's go ahead and check our work. If you integrate this, you're going to get negative 1 over 1 minus t, which is 1 over t minus 1. And then when you multiply by negative, it's going to be 1 over t, 1 minus t. So it, it's going to work. Okay, great. I just quickly checked it. And then this is going to equal x plus, oops, I forgot the ln dx over x, 1 over x is ln x plus c. I'm going to put the constant again on the right hand side, but we got to remember uh, u is t squared and t is the square root of u. So we're going to replace t with square root of u and that's going to give us the following. 
and how do you turn this into the other solution that I found? You can go ahead and put the negative two here. That's gonna square and then reciprocal, reciprocate, whatever, and hopefully you'll get the same thing. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.